Okay, day 347, just got out of the Benghazi trial. Um, the uh, testimony was pretty uh, riveting. Uh, the r testimony was from a diplomatic security service, DSS it's called, or DS, uh, from the last person that was with uh, Ambassador Stevens and, and Sean Smith, that IT guy that died, those two guys that died. And he was there the last, you know, seconds of those guys' lives. And so hearing that testimony was pretty, was pretty amazing. Um, I will say this though, I don't know how hard the uh, prosecution, or excuse me, the defense is going to defend. Uh, the guy who they've picked to be the kind of the, the guy who's going to get uh, hung with this, uh, this thing is a guy named Katala. He really looks just like a cab driver that got picked out of a lineup, really. Uh, but I'm sure he was kind of maybe swept up in the, the energy of the night and somehow on a grainy camera they've, they've identified one guy. So the Katala's the guy, he's an old guy, big beard, and so forth, and he's defending himself. But this testimony by this diplomatic services guy was really the, 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 the hit of the day, the big exciting testimony of the day. And I have to tell you, just in looking at, uh, and his name is Wickland, Scott Wickland, just in looking at the testimony, there's holes. Now, I don't know how tough the uh, defense wants to go at it, but the defense can cross-examine this and slice it like a Genzu knife. First, the guy looks out the, he's in the safe house with the two guys, with, with Stevens and Sean Smith, and he can count all the 40, 40 to 60 guys coming in. They've got uh, AK-47s or FLAs, which is another type of automatic weapon. All, and the lights are on, good visibility. All of a sudden, he's telling you know last rites to Christopher Stevens and Scott Smith. All of a sudden, immediately, the visibility goes to where he can't see a hand in front of his face. He even puts a light to his eye, can't see the light. He's crawling out of this safe uh, haven, little, little safe house, 24 feet, 8 meters, to this bathroom, which has an escape window. And all of a sudden, he loses him. Somehow loses Ambassador Stevens, somehow loses Sean Smith and then makes m multiple entries uh, uh, to try to, to sound it out, yell, find them. Somehow gets the window open. Now the window assembly has a very three different locks and three different assemblies and pins and different cranks and so forth. So him not being able to reach and find the ambassador and so forth around him or yell because the smoke is so thick, but then being able to go to this very complicated set of series of three different assemblies to be able to open the window just doesn't wash. So, and then he's back in the, he's in and out of the house. Again, he can't even see a light held up to his eye. So, and I don't know if the, uh, the defense wants to go after this or if the defense just kind of wants to lay back and let this cab driver go and take the, take the rap. But this was not a well orchestrated testimony today. I have to say this was not well done by the prosecution. Very poor. You left uh, gaping wide holes for trucks to be driven through on this, especially with the visibility. And we just I just talked to the, about McDuff about this, about cross-examination, what the eye can see, then how somebody processes it, and then how somebody relates it to the court. Uh, Wickland did a good job relating it to the court. He did a good job of, of relating his state of mind, what was going through his mind, but the eye, uh, the, the what he could see part completely failed. The, the, the house collapsed. This was an F for the prosecution today.